welcome to the Space Marketing Podcast, where we look at marketing principles, strategies, and tactics through the lens of space. Information relating to our discussion today and links to the video version can be found in the episode show notes. You can find that on spacemarketingpodcast.com. Please like and follow the podcast. It will help us get the word out about space. Today, we're going to discuss the space marketing books. I recently spoke at a space economics class at the University of Kentucky, and there was a lot of discussion about my books, so I decided to make it a podcast. There are two books so far, and I am working on the third one, which we will talk about in a few minutes. The first book in the series is Space Marketing, Competing in the New Commercial Space Industry. I launched this book in October of 2021. What's it about? It is an introduction to the marketing tactics and strategies through the lens of space. The foreword of this book is written by David Meerman Scott. He is a Wall Street Journal best-selling author and has written 12 books, including Marketing the Moon. He was instrumental in my definition of what marketing is. He was a guest last week, so look for that podcast in the show notes and anywhere you listen to podcasts. It is also on my YouTube channel, which is at space-marketing. The book explores six areas of marketing design to empower businesses and companies to build a strong brand and connect with their audience. Number one, challenges of marketing within the industry. This section highlights challenges such as the changing business model, false mindsets, and secrets, as well as challenges for the overall marketing industry. Number two, understanding your audience and their problems. The most important component on any business is our audience. This book focuses on tools that can help develop an understanding about your audience and their problems. This is critical for any marketing to happen and is key to the success in any business. Number three, developing your brand. This book explores how to create a brand's personality and how to build a brand's trust. It unpacks the visual elements of a brand, like a logo, and moves to other activities that influence how a company is perceived by its audience. Number four, promoting your brand. Once we understand the who, Then we dive into the tools that help develop content and how to get it seen by the audiences. The book introduces tools like search engine optimization and keyword development to help your content be found. It also introduces new technologies as well as existing platforms where content can live. It demonstrates how to develop a brand story that inspires, educates, and entertains. Once the content is launched into the world, it speaks about the metrics and the analytics that help determine the success of that particular piece of content. Number five, marketing strategies and tactics. This is the section where we get all into the nuts and bolts of marketing and we get to play. I talk about successful marketing strategies using some of my favorite examples and how they use these strategies. And finally, the last section is hiring a team. You get it. So now what? The book discusses how to hire and build your small marketing team. We look at the pros and cons of hiring an agency versus staffing in-house talent. There are descriptions for those roles and skills that are important to those positions. Now, throughout the book, I talk a lot about strategies and tactics, but we can only see the successes of those strategies and tactics in the case studies. I have created this fake company called Rockets R Us, and I know it's it's not very creative, but I didn't want to take a name that somebody else would use in the future. 
So throughout this book, this fictitious company launches is is about a, a rocket launch company that illustrates how to use this particular tool or strategy. We apply it and see how Rockets R Us uses it and to build their strategy. So not only do you get to see the end, but you get to see how it works and you get to see how it is applied. Now, why did I write this book? Well, when I first began my journey in marketing, it was in the, the late 90s and I was able to get into what's called an incubator. This particular incubator had all kinds of little baby businesses, and this one in particular was focused on environmental technology. A lot of these businesses had amazing inventions. You know, there were, it was how to clean electricity to make it more efficient, how to take care of watershed, how to reuse water, how to do um, waste management, and it was all of this technology that was pretty amazing and could positively impact our planet. And most of these geniuses didn't understand the concept of marketing. And uh, they figured that the world would come to them if they discovered the cure. Well, most of those companies never made it out of the incubator. And when I decided to go into space, I saw a lot of that same genius, that same inventions, and that same disconnect from marketing. So I created this book to kind of as a how-to guide for entrepreneurs that don't really get this thing marketing and want to use it. So that's why I created this book. It is available in ebook, hardback, and paperback on Amazon. And it is also available on Audible, which is how I consume books myself. Hold on to your boosters. We will be right back to discuss my second book after a brief message from our sponsors. Gotta pay the piper. My second book has just launched. It is Space Marketing, Space Ports, Communicating with Stakeholders, Communities, and Key Leaders. It is a culmination of research and interviews from the heads of major spaceports from around the world. It is designed to help areas build a spaceport and bring the space industry to their community while building and sustaining a worldwide infrastructure. It is written to assist areas who are building a spaceport to bring the space industry into their community. But it can also help with ideas for those who are trying to do something big, hairy, and audacious and bring that to their area as well. Why write about spaceports? That's kind of an odd subject. And it all started with a friend of mine, his name is Robert Ion, who was interviewed in one of the very first um, interviews that we did as Space Marketing Podcasts. And I had just come out with my book, Space Marketing. And he said, Spaceports really needs a book like this. Can you write one? Well, I have a passion for communities and, and focuses and, and providing good to the world. And I, and I saw spaceports as a hub for inspiration as well as building an industry in the community. So in the book, I start off with what is a spaceport? Or more importantly, what can it be? In this book, I present the idea and my vision of what a spaceport can be. Spaceports are where space begins. They can be a hub of inspiration, education, and transportation. 
There are so many similarities between the in aviation industry and the spaceport industry. In this book, I take a look at the history of aviation and the challenges that it faced to become an industry that it is today. What a spaceport can be. It can be a space hub for growth of a local economy. It can be innovation and production centers. It can also be research development of medical advances, pharmaceutical advances, etc. Now, when we start bringing pharmaceuticals and biomanufacturing down, back down to Earth, say using a Sierra Space vehicle, then we're going to need to have medical facilities that are nearby. So it will draw that to it. Another thing is it's a hub for satellites, communications, internet, earth monitoring, and atmospheric conditions, which is storm, pollutions, and forestry. It can be a hub for new manufacturing in space, such as fiber optics. It can also be a hub for tourism and hospitality. Once we start getting things up like, you know, stratospheric balloons, which should be in the next year, or vehicles kind of like Virgin Galactic, then we're going to need hubs from which they take off. It can also be a hub for education. Education initiative, astronaut training, STEMs, space camps, business training, workshops, all that stuff. It can be that. This book explores the idea and talks about the nuts and bolts of starting a spaceport. We discuss launch styles such as vertical and horizontal launches. We also discuss different types of vehicles from rockets to airplanes to space planes to supersonic to stratospheric balloons. We discuss communication and promotional challenges. In this context, I compare two spaceports that both started out with controversy. We look at some of their communication strategies and how it impacted their success. One of these spaceport projects was shut down, and the other one celebrated a launch this year. So they're both very dramatic, and it was a great comparison. During the creation of this book, I struggled to get interviews. We were coming out of the pandemic, and no one wanted one more Zoom call. So I created this podcast to get interviews for the book. Many of the examples and stories are based on these interviews. On top of getting in this information, I got to know the people that are in the spaceport industry. These are great people and I am having a great time getting to know them better. George Neild, chairman of the Global Spaceport Alliance, was my first interview for the show. I figure if we're going to start off with spaceports, we might as well start off at the top, and Global Spaceport Alliance is where we need to begin. For all of you that have been my guest, a very warm thank you. Podcasting is one of the strategies that I discuss in the book. It can provide a platform to discuss questions and issues. It can provide a way to get the correct information out. Plus, it also provides value for your tenants as they can be highlighted through interviews. Spaceport America is one of the spaceports that use podcasts as this tool. As the, there are questions that come out in the community, they take these questions and they make it an episode and they bring a guest on that can answer these questions effectively. They also interview their tenants so that other tenants can see the value that they get and plus they get exposure and they get to tell their story. I really believe in the development of spaceports. I believe that they can bring industry to an area, create jobs, and more importantly, light a spark. People need juice to get up in the morning and students need juice to know what school is all about. If they have a dream and they're excited 
then school is a completely different experience for them. It's not just something to endure until they graduate. It can be a tool for them and they can develop the skills that they need in order to compete. I also believe that experience is the best teacher. There are many things that you can theorize and, and that will work a certain way, but going through the steps provides more information than you can, than you can initially perceive. So I walk through the steps of what I was learning to plant the seeds for a spaceport in Kentucky. I document some of these steps in the book and provide this information through the lens of communication. One of the communication strategies I discuss is the creation of Space for Kentucky. One of the interviews that I did was with Karen McVean and with Ben Hernandez from the Arizona Spaceport Alliance. They talk about this one particular group that has a monthly round table. So I took that information and I created a round table in Kentucky the Space for Kentucky, which I highly recommend that if you're doing a spaceport or you're trying to get a spaceport or you're trying to do any initiative, you know, create a round table. It is, is very easy to do and it can be very interesting. So I started the Space for Kentucky. You can see the latest meetings on spaceforkentucky.com. I also have the recordings on my YouTube channel at space-marketing on YouTube. You don't have to be from Kentucky to join the meeting. The whole point of this meeting is to get information out about what is available in the space industry. I mean, it is, it is so big and there are so many different nooks and crannies that you may not even think of when you're thinking industry. So I introduce Kentucky and everyone else to the different industries that are available. For example, the one that I'm having on March 30th is on um, transfer technology from NASA. It has a speaker from NASA. It also has a speaker from um, Space Foundation, which certifies that technology has been from space. And it has two recipients of transfer technology from space. It, is, it has Active Pure, which does air filtration type of um, products and it has uh, Zibrio. It uses the technology from when the astronauts came back down from Earth and they had a hard time with balance. They have been nominated as NASA's Technology of the Year. And you don't have to be from Kentucky to join the meeting. The meeting is virtual at this time. I don't think people are quite ready to come together if they don't have to and recordings allow them to view whenever they have time. Recordings are posted on the website and my YouTube channel at space-marketing. Last month we did jobs in space. So the recording is available and we had NASA, the ISS, and Evona which is a staffing area and we talked about the different jobs that are in space. Space Marketing Spaceports is available in hardback and softcover on Amazon. The Audible and ebook versions are in the works. It has been a very busy couple of months with going to Spacecom and going to the FAA Space Conference and the Audible and ebook are not ready yet. So they are coming. As you finish reading the book, if you find them helpful, please leave a kind word on a review. It really does help. Not only does it help get the marketing information out to those who could use it, but it lets me know that you are out there. One of the things about writing is that it's a solitary activity. It can be so quiet. It's like talking into space. And it truly delights me when I know that there are people out there who are reading and using these books. We will keep on planting the seeds for spaceports in Kentucky 
and eventually there will be a space marketing spaceports 2.0 as we learn more about how to do it on to my current project as i was writing the spaceport book there was a, a section on space industries it started to overtake this there's their chapter in the book so i condensed it and i took that huge part out and began to make it its own project which is a space industry book and that is the subject I am writing about now and the beautiful thing is that the space marketing podcast provides a way to get those interviews as well as promoting all of the cool things that are happening in space I for one am looking very forward to the journey I hope that you will come along with me as we reach for the stars. Please like and subscribe before you head on over to my YouTube channel for bonus footage. Links to the YouTube and other social media channels can be found on spacemarketingpodcast.com. A special thank you to all of you who have helped me in my journey to space. A truly heartfelt thank you. Be sure to check out my links listed in today's show notes. I hope that you have found this podcast and these books useful in your journey as you reach for the stars.